Hey, so uh, last Thursday, uh, I went to see the FNAF movie with some of the boys, and uh, we all loved it. Even though it wasn't that scary, I expected that. But what I wasn't expecting was how well written the story actually was. I mean, it was written by Scott Cawthon, but at the same time, you also created a security breach, and we know how that went. And uh, I just, I feel like the FNAF movie does perfect that, you know, the horror from the first few games did, but still, it, it was an enjoyable film. It somehow, you know, it somehow just, th there's a realm of horror the original FNAF games brought, and by original, I mean like one to three, by the way, that, uh, you know, it just encapsulated pretty much that, and yet it still is a good film for everyone to see. So, I just said it wasn't that scary, and now I'm telling you it perfects horror? What do I mean by this? Well, in my opinion, it isn't the animatronics that were horrifying in the old games. I mean, sure, the jump scares were scary, but those wear off very quickly. What made FNAF scary was the backstory and the ambience of being alone in a building while you have a feeling that something was lurking in the deep dark shadows. The FNAF movie does this perfectly. Also, in case you didn't know, this contains spoilers for the FNAF movie. Overall, I love the appearance of the building, and I also really like that it gives a reason for the building having limited power and why it's still open to this day. It's because William, I mean that Steve, says that it's still open because the owner doesn't want to let it go yet. And once you realize this is William, this becomes a bit more terrifying. Because this could definitely mean that perhaps uh, he commits a few more murders there, occasionally. Or if not that, it shows that since the bodies are in the animatronics, if this place was taken apart, someone will find the bodies. As for the power, that's probably just a side effect due to the equipment being so dang old. My, uh, my baby girl's here. Hey, Bill, come here. Come on. Come on. Bill, come on. Alright, well, it looks like we're recording it like this then, Bill. Looks like we're recording it like this. <sighs> yeah, in case you don't know, this is my Bella Boo Boo. This is Bella May. Bella May Shore. Oh. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, um... Um... <laughs> I love you too. Uh, so basically what I was saying was so so yeah, the equipment's so dang old that's probably just a side effect. But even the twist at the end with revealing William killed all the kids, obviously us FNAF fans know that already, but to anyone else this is so dang brutal. And the pictures with Vanessa with William since he's her dad, and the drawing of the golden bunny with the kids is so dang scary once you realize what William did. When I played FNAF, the jump scares get old, but to this day, one of my favorite and disturbing scenes has to be that scene from Fruity Maze, where Susie is crying over her dead dog. It's okay, Belle. You're good. It's not you. <laughs> over her, uh, her dead dog. And but then you see William right behind her in the suit, telling her to follow him, that he knows where her dog is. This always scares me so bad, because, well, uh, not like jump scares scary, but just... It gives you this bad feeling because most likely this has actually happened in real life because it's so easy to manipulate children and therefore when the children find out who William is it makes it so much more satisfying for what they do to him afterwards because you now what I said earlier about you know this probably happened in real life I can imagine this has probably sadly happened because and you see people like a mascot costume they can be literally anybody Especially in a kid-friendly business. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and then there's the ambience. The building gives off this abandoned, dark, and paranormal vibe to it. Even before you meet Freddy and the gang. I mean, just imagine, your office is this small space with just an old computer monitor, a fan, and a proposed empty soda cup. It's terrifying. I also just love the role reversal of the crooks when two of their men are killed. After Hank is killed by Bonnie, and Carl is killed by Carl, which, by the way, I don't want to know what happened to Carl's face, the human Carl, not the cupcake Carl, Jeff hides in the security office, just like in the original game, giving us some nostalgic moments of barely surviving even one night at this place. 
After almost dying to Carl Cupcake Sr., he is sadly not fast enough to avoid Foxy, which we all have to admit is the hardest to avoid because of his unique mechanic. Also, not to mention the realistic Springlock failure scene and Abby almost getting killed by a dang robotic chicken. And uh, this is basically just, um, you know, I just don't really have much to say besides this. It's just, it's a film that goes by somewhat fast, but unlike the Mario movie, it actually has a really good pace. Now, if you have seen any of my past videos, you know I like making theories. So I believe my theory for today is that this is actually in the FNAF timeline. Why and how? Simply because the game events, they are canon obviously, but the actual games are not. Because, I mean, you look at Help Wanted, it basically confirms that. And then we also see Ella from the books and the film for some reason. So, therefore, I'm uh, here's what my theory is. My theory is that Mike is actually the creator of Fazbear Entertainment. Why do I say this? Well, uh, something that kind of got me a little off, uh, um, just gave me the, um, a weird off feeling was the fact that when Mike goes to William, when he starts to read Mike's last name, he just stops and stutters. Now, I don't believe he's actually an Afton, mainly because I, that would somewhat make sense if... No, that would make sense if um, we knew something else about William, because I don't think that he is Mike's father in this. Now, the only thing that, that this... Um, now, here's why I think happens, though. And so there's Mike Schmidt, but then there, but then think about this. So what if there's Mike Schmidt and Michael Afton? And we all just made the assumption that since they have pretty much the same name, they're the same person. But in this case, that's probably not the case. Because think about this way. Perhaps the reason Afton doesn't read Mike's last name is just upon seeing his name Mike again. I'm guessing that that, that probably, um, even though you know, he says his name a few times, I feel like maybe looking at his name on a record might be the fact that I'm thinking that probably his son is was either deemed dead because now according to timeline perhaps social location does take place before this and that could also mean the whole Ennard thing happened and so Michael gets killed by Ennard in that case but I'm pre I'm thinking that perhaps um I'm well I know. Wait a minute. You know, that actually could happen, yeah. So I'm thinking that whole thing with the location actually happens beforehand, but then in this case, Michael pretty much dies, but Afton doesn't know that yet. Or, well, he thinks he's dead, but really we all know Michael Afton's still not dead. And I'm thinking that perhaps that's what's going to happen, is that that reminds William of the whole thing on um, seeing his son's name on, like, one of those death recordings. And so I'm, I'm thinking that's I'm thinking that's probably the reason why uh, William stutters with that. It's not because Mike's his son or Michael Smith's his son. So uh, what 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 um, what else do I have here? Well, I think another part to this theory would be that the fact that I think it's pretty much confirmed that this takes place in 2000. Now we never got confirmation on the date to FNAF one, so it very well could be 2000. And because we've all insisted that's somewhere in the 1990s since the pay rate's so low. But they explained that the pay rate just basically sucks because the at this point the place is almost completely shut down. So that could technically make sense. So therefore, um, you know, Night Six and Custom Night are obviously not canon. But I'm thinking so perhaps the reason this looks like this is because Mike, you know, he's aware that like you know if the animatronics are helping you and to stop a springlocked man. That's not going to be a fun game, but perhaps if the animatronics, due to his experiences, were, you know, deadly, but make it somewhat hard, somewhat simple, that would make a terrifying game. And so, therefore, he makes the games. But, you know, here's the one thing I don't exactly understand with this theory I made. Also, this is, I actually didn't even script this theory, this is just me going off my knowledge All right, right off the bat. I believe that, you know, that that's also why Golden Freddy is there as not, like, a natural antagonist in the game, but an Easter egg, because he technically hasn't really met Golden Freddy. And he's met the child, but he hasn't met, like, the actual animatronic thing in a while. Okay, so, you know, that happens, and then I'm thinking perhaps, uh, 
FNAF 2, unless it happens in the second movie, he probably hears it from someone else. And, you know, basically we're just going to go down the line of um, a few of the other games, probably. And, you know, Mike probably creates that. But overall, the reason I say he's probably the leader of Fazbear Entertainment as a whole is, you know, I, 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 the reason I say that is because I feel like, um, wait a minute. Ah, shoot, wait a minute. No, no, sorry. Fast forward to it, dang it. Um, maybe not that, but I know he is going to be the one that writes the books. I'm, I'm thinking that's that's the reason being is because perhaps he's the one that writes the Fazbear Fright books, which is what Ella's from, and therefore he just writes about the actual experiences from other people. Almost like how if you ever played the games Fear to Fa Fears to Fathom, like the developer finds scary stories and makes scary um, games off it. It's pretty much the same thing. And overall... I feel like that could be somewhat of a good explanation. As for the create, as for the leader of Fazbear Entertainment, it's probably going to be Henry in this universe. Or if not, maybe the fa maybe Fazbear Entertainment doesn't exist, and that was just something to throw in to put in like a uh, a business uh, controversy thing with FNAF. I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is all I have time for today. Uh, I'm gonna be doing covering um uh let's just say a viral YouTube um series. And either next week or the week after. And I'm Complex Live. I hope you enjoyed whatever the heck this was. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Bye bye.